Hi there, Vince here from My Mate Vince, and we're back on Brian's boat, and this is part two of the general maintenance. So in part one, we changed out the horn, we winterized the boat, and we made a start on the portholes. This one here, the portholes have now arrived, so we need to put three of them in. They're a lot bigger, so there's a lot more work involved, and because they're bigger, it throws up some other headaches as well, and what throws up more headaches is the fact that they're not the best quality. They're not as good as the old ones that were on the boat from new. It's a bit of a challenge, but we like challenges. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the video. So we're back again, it's about two weeks later and Brian was trying to get the correct size portholes but it's really hard and also the quality's not up there with the old ones either. So we got these ones from Amazon. I think they were roughly around £80 each because they're black. The white version of them are a lot less money but he wanted to go for black because of the, the look from the outside but they just don't compare. So for example, when you undo these ones here to release the window, can you see can you see it just comes off so basically look how short the bolts are here uh, so yeah if you're careful no there you go so if you want to open the windows the chances are these are going to come off so the quality really isn't there which is uh which is a shame but saying that there is a load of rubber and stuff here so they should be they should be watertight uh, he got three of the same ones and uh it means that the bathroom one will have to be tinted you know so he's going to have to put like a film on here to tint it as well as that they're going to be very now apparently this is a common problem and when brian's been speaking to people they're all saying the same thing you have to widen up the holes the thing is when these ones fail and i'm sure they're going to fail a lot quicker than the original ones did then it will be easy to get replacements in the future because a lot of them seem to be this size now they seem to be standard sizes which are completely different than the original size problem is this is a lot bigger than this one here but measuring it looks like it's just about going to fit in between this bit here and the bends here so that's what we're going to be working on today i say we it's going to be brian because i've uh, managed to uh, chop up my finger so i'm just going to be doing filming and i'm there to hand him stuff also he's got some stainless steel bolts washers and nuts as well i think these are 304 l so obviously stainless steel because like marine environment saying that this is the river thames so it's not salt water but still hopefully those uh if they're stainless steel they're not going to rust out and he's made a template here as well so we're going to be putting that on the outside he's also got some silicon as well marine grade silicon he's got two different types here this is the dow corning i think this is this dow corning or is this a dow chemical yeah, Dow, I think this is Dow calling, and this is 791, and he's also got this stuff here. HA6, Bondit, Marine Grade, RTV, Silicon Sealant, and in black as well, because remember, when you put this on, it's all going to be squidging. You know the outer ring that goes around here? You're going to see the difference between here and here, because the outer ring, there's a bit of a gap where it goes on here. So if you were to use white silicon, it's gonna look untidy there. So that's why uh, that's why he's got the black. This porthole must be made for wooden boats because if you have a look, the, the, the holes don't line up. So if you have a look at these holes here, so there's one right here, but yet there's not one right here. And I suppose on a wooden boat, that's what you would want because you wouldn't want the screws meeting and hitting each other. But you see on a fiberglass boat, we need the holes to go right the way through with the, uh, the bolts and the nuts, so we're gonna have to uh, drill new holes. But we wanna keep the outside as waterproof as possible. So that's the outer ring, that's the ring that goes on the outside. We're not gonna be drilling this. So we're gonna line this up to here, do this before doing any other, off, any other work, and we're gonna drill through here, and that will basically drill through the inner ones, and then hopefully it will just offer up. And when this, when this, is on there i don't think you're we're going to have obviously empty holes not doing anything i don't think your eye is going to be drawn to it too much because just imagine this goes on the outside but imagine it's going to look like roughly like that when it's finished i think it's going to look okay i don't think your eyes are going to be drawn too much to the holes there because it's quite dark in here anyway and the stainless steel bolts they're like a hex key at the end here or allen key and if you look in they're countersunk so they're going to fit in there nicely and as well as that we've got these little uh washer uh, these little nuts with you know the nylon lock on the inside so hopefully they won't vibrate loose
thing as well. The new ones don't have like this mosquito net thing here, which uh, I don't know whether that's going to be a problem or not, because if they were to be opened on the River Thames, I don't know if there's much of a mosquito issue here, but I know where I live, still water in the summer gets loads of mozzies in my back garden when I've just got a little river nearby. So uh, yeah, maybe that will become a problem at a later stage. Right, so template here, we're just like looking here because we don't want to cover up the uh, boat sign. So that should be okay, <laughs> we're thinking there. It's gonna be a bit nerve wracking making the cut, but hopefully it will go okay. Feeling inside, obviously there's no wires or pipe work or anything hidden there. What we're gonna do is, just in case, I don't know, I presume it doesn't crack because of the wooden stuff, but we're gonna drill a hole here, 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 uh, here, here, here and here, and here and here, just, and I suppose here and here as well. Just basically everywhere where a line finishes, just in case when they're cutting, I don't want the crack to kind of start, you know, going down here and here. So we're going to use a multi-tool, you know, the vibrating tool that does that for these bits. And then maybe use a Dremel tool for the corners. We've got the multi-tool, so with this it just vibrates very quickly left to right. It's, it's a great tool, sort of hobbyist tool, but it does come in useful for loads of different jobs. So we're ready to go now. Obviously it goes without saying here, but when you're undertaking this job or using power tools, appropriate safety clothing should be worn. For example, in this instance here, you should be wearing gloves, you should be wearing ear defenders, you should be wearing safety glasses in case something flies in your eye, and you should be wearing a mask because you don't want to be breathing in this fiberglass dust. So don't copy what you see in this video, take it purely for entertainment. Now, because there's wood wedged in between the fiberglass, Brian's just doing it bit by bit because obviously the wood's going to burn otherwise. Not that it matters, it's going to come out, but I suppose in theory it could start smoking and uh, maybe do a little bit more than that. So he's just taking it slow. <laughs> So Brian's gone through the fiberglass now, but not as far as the carpet. We'll worry about that. When we get this out, we can worry about cutting the carpet with a Stanley knife. And that way, hopefully, it won't fray on everything on the inside. He's just gonna go straight across this bit because we can take that bit out afterwards. So, uh, the river's not running as fast today. You can see that it's, uh, it's slowed right down. Now, Brian's used to this tool and he's got a steady hand, so he's confident that he's not gonna be jumping all over the place and damaging all this. Remember as well that you're gonna have the, uh, the outer ring covering all this anyway, but if you were worried, what you could do is you could put a load of tape around here and then chances are you're then gonna damage the tape rather than going right the way through to the boat itself. Corners, I think we're going to try the cordless Dremel tool here. That's uh, with that end bit on, because it comes with like an assortment of bits. Or we've put a narrow blade on here, and that might work, you know, especially if you do it at an angle, just bit by bit going around the corner. You should have to go through in one go, you can just do it millimetre by millimetre. But we'll try this and see if that, uh, see if that works. <laughs> Right, so the Dremel does work, but it's a little bit slow going and it kind of uh, wants to jump out a lot. So Brian's just gonna try the multi-tool. Yeah, it's 
it's, it's easier with the multi tool, isn't yeah. it? I just want to see what's happened there. <laughs> Yeah, in this instance here, the multi-tool works much better than the Dremel. Uh, you can go much smaller, but if you look at this one, it's quite aggressive. I say this is for wood, but we're going to try it just to kind of finish off the bits that need to go deep in the corner. But we're nearly there now. And that gives me a perfect opportunity to shout out to my mate Vince Massive. Burp, burp. The members this month are KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeeks C, Anthony Dean, Bazza2, Operational 117, Russ Melanson, Save Our Stuff, and Hunter Short. Massive thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yay, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's just a, I suppose it's the carpet stuck to it that's keeping it in. It will make it easier to cut with a standing knife on the inside now. Yeah. Just cut the carpet. This is all going to be hidden anyway by the the porthole itself. You can really smell the uh, the burnt fiberglass in here. Maybe there now. Yay! Okay, great. Nice. Well, that went all right. Right, so using the multi-tool, we're just going to do this bit here now. And the good news is there was no cracking off the fiberglass anywhere. Much thicker here than it is up there. Oh, yeah. Much thicker. About 10 mil there, it's about 6 mil there. Right. Yeah, if you look here, it's like there's uh, a kind of double, there's like a triple layer, one layer here, one there, and one there with wood. Yeah, up here, it just seems to be it's two layers with one bit of wood in the middle, so it definitely is thicker on this uh, section, this section here. hole to see if we need to widen any bit up. Right so that's the construction of it there and if you have a look so it looks like two lots of fiberglass, wood, another bit of fiberglass and then this outer one here. Is the outer one called a gel coat? Yeah. Ah okay and that's the gel coat there. A lot goes into it doesn't it? So obviously this is the inside part but we're just going to offer it up just to see if it fits. So uh, yes it does. Yeah. Do you know what we didn't really think about too much is the curve of the boat. If, for example, there was a more extreme curve on the boat when you were doing your portholes, then I wonder would there be enough flex in here to, uh, well, I suppose with glass, that's glass here, not plastic, so maybe there wouldn't be enough flex. But anyway, we're, we're going to be okay because you can see the curve of the boat isn't very strong here. So that's it. We need to put that on the inside now and see what it looks like. It's been lining it up. So from the inside, it looks better when it's like this. Yeah, the template's a tiny bit bigger, so it gives you a little bit of play. But from the outside, apparently that doesn't look good. So we're going to go with what, what it looks good on the outside because it kind of, you can see the, how the boat shapes here. You see when this is in here, there's going to be a bit of flex, but hopefully with the carpet, it will all pull in. So we're just going to screw now in each corner and uh, yeah, it's going to look better from the outside than it does from the inside. Now, this is what I was talking about with the curvature of the boat, you see? So basically that side now is touching here, but look here, you can get your finger underneath here, you can't get your finger underneath here. So there's going to be quite a lot of strain on this, I mean, it should be fine, because look, you've got all this rubber going around here, so it should be fine, but uh, it would again be useful if these bolts were longer, because then you see, there'd be more room for this, you see, you know? We're just checking now, see if it lines up on the outside still. Right, okay, it all looks okay from the outside and these do work on here, but you need, I'm trying to do this one-handed, you need to use a little bit of force to sort of push this side in. But there you go, they're in there now. So we're going to put another screw here and another screw here. So thinking about these things here, they are on a pin going through. There's like a little hole here and a hole here. So uh, the pin can stay. I'm sure you'd be able to 
by them or actually thinking about it here if this is also on a pin we might be able to use the ones from the old ones because these are much longer but then again it might be the white bit might not fit i'm wondering they look like they're on a pin as well. We might be able to reuse them. On these ones here, they're because they, these are well made, uh, you can't even see the pins on these, so there's no fear of them falling out. But this is scrap now, so we're going to knock off one of the, uh, uh, these bits here. And then you see, as long as we can get this bit out, see how big the pins are. We might be lucky, the pins might be the same size as the ones on the boat, because we've got to reuse the ones that come with the black porthole. But if not, we might be able to just drill out the pinhole uh, a little bit more and then use this with the white ones. I know the white is not going to look as nice as the black, but the whole inside of the boat's white and it would be a lot better if we could use these because they work and it's not going to be a problem. While the other ones, you know it's going to be a headache uh, once you actually start using them. Is there any way you can just put your foot? Yeah, of course on I can. That. Just yeah. one foot and then that's it. It's... Okay, thank you. Let's put that up. Okay. Right, does that pin knock through, I wonder? Yeah, that should knock through, I think. So you can see now that we have to try to knock out these little pins here, but we're not gonna go crazy on it. If it starts moving out, good. If not, we'll, uh, we'll leave it. But they definitely look a lot thicker than these ones here. So then this will have to be knocked out and that hole will have to be widened up. So Brian's just using a, a drill bit as a, uh, as a punch. That came out so easy, wow. Yeah, look at the difference between them. It's a huge amount of difference. I mean, these might end up being a little bit too long and maybe you could like whack yourself off them, but uh, nobody's really gonna be moving much around that part of the boat anyway. I think if it's possible, we'll try to widen up that hole and fit these on. Try to just knock the old pin out now. Might have put it on something more solid. Yeah, we need a bit of a, another. Have you got another hammer? Lovely. Here Just we got go. To find something to chamfer it out now. Need three hands for this job, eh? Hey? Uh, there we go, it's out. Excellent. No, nearly, yeah. Oh, nearly. That's it. Don't wanna... That's it, it's out now. Excellent. Right. So we're going to make that hole. We're going to make it bigger. One problem we're going to run into is, so this is going to fit in here like so, but can you see the thread of this doesn't go very far down. So with this on, it will only go down as far as the thread. Really on this particular one now, this is a little bit too long, but what can you do? Well, I suppose, well, might be getting too involved, but you could actually cut this down and make a new hole. It's just that we haven't got any vice or anything here, so it's easy to make this hole bigger. To start a fresh hole all the way through, I think we're gonna struggle. So we're gonna to try to do this. Remember, it can always be done again at a later stage. You know, the pin can be knocked out, and then this can be taken home. And with a vice, it would be easier to drill a hole right the way through. But I think when we do this, I'm not sure if it's gonna grip it up enough to make it fully tight. We'll see though. See if the pin fits. I reckon it'll go, be tight once you push it. Shall I try it? Uh, yeah. I'll use my little uh, bit here. Thank you. So it's a little bit on the tight side, but uh, I think the next drill size up might be a little bit too. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> where's it? Oh, it's gone in here. <laughs> in the no. perfect hole. Oh, hold it. <laughs> no, it's not that hole. Go, <laughs> there's a classic. Oh no! Oh, oh it's there it is! It, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it got stuck in that little hole. Right, we are just going to widen it up just a little bit because it is a bit on the tight side. Yay! There we go. That's okay. Perfect. Let's get it on the boat. So rather than putting it on the boat, let's see what it's like on one that's out of the boat. Be easy to work on. So on this one here, you're going to want it roughly around there i mean that's that's now sort of like finger tight but can you see it's really this needs to be in probably what about another two mil 
about another two mil to make it fully home and it's not getting there yeah and that's because you would either need to have this white plastic bit going down more or do you see the shoulder of this bit here if the shoulder was brought down a few mil then the white plastic wouldn't stop because this is happy to keep going because this is threaded down it's just that the shoulders stopping it when the plastic goes against the uh, shoulder here it can't go anymore yeah so really that shoulder would need taken down a little bit that might be easier than having to knock this bit you know cut this bit down and then put a new uh, put a new hole for the pin that might be the easiest thing to do but that's not something that could be done here but in a shed that wouldn't be too hard even just with a, a bit of an oh, i haven't got a lathe but even with an angle grinder you might be able to gently just move that around so i think what we're going to do today is we know now it's an option to make these longer and it's not such a big deal because this can all be done inside the boat no problem let's just put the black one back on for the time being and let's just get them fitted to the boat because otherwise we're going to run out of time today and this can be done at a later stage brian can do, just do this himself bring it down to his shed and work on it in comfort and then uh, put it back on the boat nice and easy right so brian's going to drill the holes through the boat now we're going to go from the inside out because remember there's a little bit of play in the outer ring and it might not line up properly while with the inside bit this is now in place this isn't going to move this is where it's going to be so the holes we drilled earlier are the holes that we want to drill through now okay brian okay do you want me to start yeah Yeah, there goes one. That through? Yeah. Okay, I'll do another one next to it. And again. Happy? Yeah. Okay, I'll do the one, two. So there should be two near the corner, yeah? Yeah, do you know what? I'll go yeah, on. then you can use that. Yeah, so yeah, this is in there. Now I'm going to do. I'd like to close the. No, I'll open it for a sec. Okay. Right, so we've got to do that all the way around and then we can bring the bolts through from the outside. This one here. Right, so before we put the sealant in, Brian's just put the outer ring on and we're just going to... Oh, actually, before that, just to show the screw holes, you see they're all around here so we're just going to put a couple of screws through just to make sure that they're going to fit nicely otherwise once all the sealant is on the inside it's going to be a bit annoying to have to keep bringing the screws in and out on purpose we didn't make the holes really big so uh, yeah, so that's gone all the way in. We'll just do one over this side and then it means hopefully they should all line up. Tell you what, the black really does set it off nice with the sign and also this mark, this thing across the middle. That's why I've got it. Looks it. much better. The canopy and the covers. Yeah. I don't know if everyone's off at me or something like that, but. Yeah it, looks, yeah, it looks much better. Right, so two went in, so presumably all the others are going to go in okay as well. So now we have to get the sealant and put loads in there and uh, squidge it all together. Just to show you the difference, I know it's not clean yet, but compared to this side, I mean they're lovely with the aluminium ones, but look, compared to that there's no comparison. I don't think, I think the black looks much better. I think it looks better that they're bigger as well. Okay, as you can see, they're out there now and that one over there. They are too long, but we actually got them long on purpose because of the bathroom one they need to be quite long in the bathroom one now we're not using these ones here because they're not countersunk so these are the ones that came off but you can see that they're flat there they're not countersunk like the like the new ones so uh what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to before we fit them all just i mean a little bit sticking up is fine but there's too much there it doesn't look very nice so we're probably going to cut back about a centimeter or maybe a little bit more maybe about 13 or 14 mil and uh, we'll just do that with the Dremel tool and we'll put the bolt on first, cut it with the Dremel tool and then hopefully when we undo the bolt it will then make the, the thread nice when it's coming off there so they'll go back on again nicely. So it's not ideal having to cut them back but look, even if you look at the professional ones and these would be original with the boat, they have just been chopped back anyway. So, you know, it's not, uh, 
even from the factory it's not it's not perfect so we've got a right little operation going on here so we want them all the same length so brian's putting the the bolt on and it just so happens that with that little socket set there when he when he he, he uh puts them all the way in until basically the, the nut comes out so if you do that now and then we know they're all the same length on every single one there we go and then it's much quicker to actually use the angle grinder to do this bit here obviously having eye protection on There we go, and then he passes them on to me, and basically I'm just rounding off with that part of the Dremel tool, just the edges here, just so the uh, the nut can go on nicely. Right, so before we put the sealant in, we've just put this one in here just to make sure that it's going to fit, and it looks fine. It's about, it's hard to tell, a mil or so, maybe two mil above that one. We're just going to put the same one in now on top here. And all the ones that came off are definitely all the same size uh, but yeah there's again a huge difference because remember the bottom of the boat's a lot thicker than the top bit so you can see now we've got about five or six mil here but you know what just to make life easy rather than try to get everyone perfect we're just going to run with it as it is and it will be like factory. I know it's not as good as having each of them done individually, but unless you were going to do it in situ it would be a bit awkward. Right so when the uh, outer ring was on Brian put some tape just around the edge there because then when we do come to do the masticking it's all the silicon I should say it's going to uh, come out all at the edge here and it just means it will be a lot neater rather than going all the way across the boat right so we've got our marine grade silicon here whether it's going to be any good or not who knows but we'll give it a go so we're going to be putting pumping in loads around the edge here and what you're doing a little bead around here Brian as well yeah I'm going to try and fit it all first if yeah. I get it all quite a bit, hope it's not going inside the boat. <laughs> no, because it was screwed on, aren't we? Yeah, okay. sure it's not. Wet your finger first, otherwise it sticks. Okay. Right, Brian's now just pushing it all the way in and then he's going to go around it again. Hopefully then it will uh, work its way all the way through. So now he's just going halfway in between them and hopefully by the time it squishes down, it will push both ways. And now we're just putting a small bead just around the very outside and then the excess can be wiped off. So what we have to do now is uh, put the outer ring on and then start bolting through and I suppose you just kind of want to do it tight, but maybe not too tight. I suppose you don't want to squidge every little bit out of the thing. Ah, oh, there we go. Lovely. Right, so we're going to uh, bolt through now and then give it all a nice good wipe at the end. We're just bolting up now. I've done this one here done this one here uh, every now and then we're going to keep closing the window just to make sure that it is going to still close you know make sure it's not getting warped uh, and also we're working from the inside outwards on uh, on both sides there so just going bit by bit well that's the inside all bolted up so Brian's just cleaned up the silicon on the outside annoyingly it's going off a lot quicker than we expected so uh, cause the thing is we want to clean all the, the way around the edge here but then we also want to put a, a new little bead on because if you have a look over here and obviously these are from the factory so they're going to be done right well I presume they're from the factory can you see that they've put the you know there is a bead around here as well so here and here I'm just removing off the excess because a lot of it's gone quite hard I keep saying we it's Brian doing it all <laughs> We only want a very thin bead going across it now. 
it will still need to be smoothed out with the finger. Okay. Right, and now for wet finger, we'll just go across all that and it will just smooth it out. The moment of truth, the uh, big reveal with the the tape coming off. Tape's frozen. Yeah, I think we'll have to get the Stanley knife on it. Yeah, it's go looking good stuff. though, it's looking good. Right, well, let's clean it with the Stanley knife and then we'll uh, have a close look. Nice. Well, I'm amazed at how good our sides come out because it's the first time. So if you look at this side here, Obviously this has been on for years, but the uh, mastic's kind of, uh, I keep calling it mastic, mastic, I know other people say silicon, but uh, you can see it goes up a little bit there. Look at this bit now. Haven't cleaned the inside. Look how good this bit looks. Look at that. It's gone really, really well. When it's fully dry, then it'd be nicer maybe to go around the edge bits here and just make sure there's kind of, because there's going to be a few little bits to where there might be a little bit of excess, but just kind of very thin stuff around these bits. But it's come out really, really good. The only bit where if we were doing it again, which will make, make sure we don't make the mistake on the next one. Do you know the sort of drip loop thing that we did? It's gone a little bit low here. I mean, it's filled with uh, the mastic, so it's not going to have a problem, but you can just see there. It's just a mil millimetre too low there. But look how much better it looks. So now, have a look at that there. Compare, well I suppose it's just preference what colour you like, but I think the, uh, I think the new one suits the boat more. Yeah, looking really good. We have it from the inside and again if you look at that side there and that side there then I don't know the one's not really much worse than the other side I suppose if anything that's a slight bit more yellowed so it may look older but yeah happy uh, happy with how that job went so the only thing that needs to be done is in time extend these out so that they are actually usable because it's still uh, they don't you know they're not uh, they want to come off basically by the time you've undone them. This side here is a lot tighter because of the shape of the boat. There you go. There we go. Whee! And now it's opened. So that is it. We just have to do the same on the other two now. Now this is the uh, the bathroom one, and this is more involved because you see the inside here isn't just carpet. It's this kind of like you know like plasticky sheet here to make it all waterproof and nice. So uh, we're having to cut through not only the fiberglass of the boat but the plastic as well. But it's cutting through fine. And uh, yeah, what is going to be a bit hard is because the window's bigger. We're going to have to take this bit off, this sort of padding. But we're hoping that it will kind of. Uh, pull out this way and then you see we can put the porthole in and put this back in on top so uh, yeah Brian's just gonna do a bit of cutting now dark now but the major major hiccup here so basically we're at the kind of limit of this the, it's not the width if anything this window is a little bit too it could do with being another inch or so wider it's the height now i know you can't see because it's uh, it's gone dark but uh, 
We can't lift the window anymore because of the outside design of the boat. We've got that big kind of rubber thing going all the way around it. So we're already at the limit up there. And unfortunately, we can't actually open the window. And this is the window that you'd want to open because it's the, the bathroom window. Because you see, these things are against here. So you can't actually let them drop down. So it's uh, yeah, a real headache. But what we're thinking is, if we were to get extra long bolts, now I know it's gonna be annoying, but then you see, if you were to undo it all the way out to here, then the windows would open because they could clear the actual, you know, they could clear these things here. So yeah, it's far from ideal, but this whole thing is far from ideal because you see, the ones that were in there originally were a lot less in the, in the height. So uh, yeah, just kind of happened to work with what we've got. Well, okay, a solution to the window thing is gonna hopefully be this, I'm not sure if it's long enough, but the, uh, uh, the uh, one of the people at the boatyard here had these. I think they're just M8, not fine thread. And you see, all you have to do is grind off the head here, and then Brian can bring this home, put it in his vise, drill through a little hole for the pin to go through, and can you see how much longer that's gonna be? But that should hopefully work. If not this one, a longer one will definitely work. All right, so it's a couple of days later now and Brian's been busy in his shed and what he's done is he's uh, re, these are the M8 bolts. So he's fitted them in here, he had to drill through and he got his tap and die kit out. And now you can see how much longer they are. So we've just offered it up and luckily the window now opens, but you have to undo them quite a long way, but at least it now opens in the bathroom. So we're gonna get this one fitted, get the one at the front fitted, and then I'll show you it all at the end. On this one, because this is slightly uh, not quite as wide as the other one, we're gonna have to, you can see the sort of shape of it there. We're gonna build up these side bits just a little bit with some fiberglass left over from where we cut out the other one. So we're gonna epoxy that into place and then we've got some car body filler. Just, it's all gonna be hidden anyway because it's sandwiched in between the window. But just to fill up the gap a little bit, we just need to have, I don't know, maybe five mil on each side. So uh, we're gonna do that and then we're just gonna use some car body filler. Then you're not relying purely on the mastic to kind of make it waterproof. If, uh, if the mastic failed, then there's gonna be more body work there to keep the water out. So this is the problem here, you see, because this one is narrower than the last one. You can see we've got this big gap here and although it is just about covered up with the outer ring, there's not really, it's asking a lot of the mastic to fill, the silicon to fill all that and also this side here. So uh, we're just gonna use a bit of this. And we're just gonna cut out this shape here, see how we go, smooth it off a little bit, get it to fit and then uh, epoxy it in and then you see we can fill over it and hopefully that will be slightly better than just having a big hole. Progress is good today, so uh, we've put in some side bits here. They're epoxied in, we've just got to wait for them to go off and then we can put the, the filler either side. Cutting on the last one here now, and that's gone really nice. If you look at that one, that's good. And also what's interesting is here, look, can you see it says sling just here? And also there's another one back here, sling. That's when you're taking a boat out of the water. That's where you've got to put the straps around. And also on the boat, the neighboring boat, can you see it says lift? So uh, yeah, when you're using one of these to get it out of the water, then uh, yeah, that must be where you uh, wrap the big straps, you know, the big straps that go around it. So yeah, it's all going well today. Okay, so it's been filled up and just sanded back. So hopefully now, the silicon will go all over that and it doesn't have to be so full of silicon but there's still a nice big gap for the silicon to go in so yeah it's all going well this one now we just need to do a bit of uh, silicon around the uh, edge but yeah today everything's just going straight forward and do you remember earlier on we winterized the boat well now we're going to be putting the uh, little thumb screw things back in interestingly there is a quite a bit of water well, not a lot, but you know, it's definitely puddled up here, down here now. Water must have, maybe there was a bit of thawed water in there, or maybe it just takes time to drip out. So yeah, we're doing that. Anyway, let me uh, show you the uh, the lights at the front, the portholes, I mean. So there we go. That's that one there. All looking good. Brian's going to put the long screws in, like we discussed earlier on. That's that one there, looking good. And the bathroom one is that one there. So they're the ones with the 
thumb screws. And it does open, it's just that you've got to undo these all the way, all the way to the very, very end, and that gives enough clearance then for that to lift up. Now, this one here doesn't open as wide as the others because of this top bit here, but what we've done is we've just tightened up the little hinges here a little bit because there's only a little bolt through it and, and a nut, and then it opens up to around, uh, it opens up about to there. So, uh, mind you, you're not going to be able to open it all the way up because there's uh, a shelf above it anyway. So that's that. So I'll show you the outside now. From the outside, it definitely looks better. I suppose you could argue from the inside it's better because it lets more light in, but that, what's the matter? Right, disaster averted, luckily. So what happened was, Brian was putting the first one in and he either over tightened it, or I think more than likely, maybe these go brittle over the years because basically this came off in his hand <laughs> and left the plastic in the bottom of the engine. Now, not that big a deal, it's just the, it's underneath so it's hard to get to good thing about that is you've got gravity on your side so at least the bits want to fall out of the engine so what he did is we just got this little thing here with a torx bit that kind of fits in here we started off with a small bit but it didn't work but can you see you can kind of ram that in there and then he slowly undone this at an angle and basically it well what happened was it it broke it in two parts which was good so both bits came out so luckily now that's all right and if there was any tiny little bit that's left which i don't think there is gravity would have made it fall out of the engine anyway so we're not going to put these in he's going to buy new ones just in case these do go bristle i mean they're only plastic maybe it's possible if these are ones that have been in since near enough new because two of them look a different color and it was these ones that broke the dark blue i think maybe they've just gone gone old so he's going to get four new ones just to stop that happening again because that could have been a nightmare especially if it was on the lower one because you wouldn't have even been able to get this underneath it very easily so uh, yeah that's it so anyway sorry as i was saying function wise i think you could easily argue that uh, it was better before because you know it's uh, we now have to make these screws longer also it doesn't they don't sit in the middle as nice there as they did before and as well as that they haven't got the fly screen you know that fly screen there could really be an issue you know it's on the thames i don't know if this is in the summer is it still enough to get mosquitoes i don't know because i've never lived by the thames so yeah function wise it was probably better before but looks wise it does definitely look better now from the outside and it means that if they fail again because the other ones were all getting cracked up if these ones fail hopefully now these sizes will be standard for many years to come let me show you outside all right check this out so this is now the bathroom one nice nice and straight and stuff and this one here again nice and straight so if you look at the boat now like that look at this one they're lovely they're like aluminium really nice on that boat but yeah i think because you've got the black go faster stripe the canopy at the top's black i think the black probably does set it off better than the uh, white ones so yeah that's that side do you know what it's taken us a lot longer than we thought it's like one of those things that it takes three times longer than what you think but overall i think we're really happy with how that's gone so that's it we've done the winterizing put three new portholes in and the horn as well and the horn looks better so all in all yeah if you look at that side of the boat now with the horn up there i think it's all looking very very good and it was nice to have a a bit of a break i enjoy coming down here because it's so peaceful and you've got this to look at here so it's just lovely so hopefully you enjoyed the video it makes a bit of a change from being over the yellow or blue mat and uh, makes a bit of change from the rolls royce as well so uh, if you did enjoy it give it a massive thumbs up hopefully there'll be other little jobs that i can get involved in in the future and we can do a bit more filming on brian's boat so that's it take care everyone thank you so much for watching